The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is that King of glory? He is the King of glory. Shall we pray? Everlasting and eternal Father, it is once again that we, your people, come to you in the matchless name of Jesus. First of all, thanking you for who you are, and more importantly, for your kingdom that is from everlasting to everlasting. Yeah, Lord. Yes. We thank you, O oh God, that you called us worthy, called us worthy to be able to hear your name when it was called, to hear the call that caused us to come to you. We call you the King of glory. We recognize you as the everlasting Father. We thank you that you are the keeper of our souls, that you are the provider for everything that we currently have and for the people that we are. And now, O oh Lord, we ask as we lift up ourselves to you, sacrifice of praise to you, that you, O oh God, would receive us this day and move on our behalf. For you are the King of glory, the Lord of hosts. You are he that is before, that is, and that shall ever be. Amen. We thank you for who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Family. Good morning, both to those in the sanctuary and those at home that are watching, that are participating. And I don't take it lightly that you take the time to be here, whether it be in person or through the technology. We thank our, our Deacon Hammond for making it possible, for doing the legwork. We thank all those who participate in today's worship. Our responsive reading Christian Commitment, number 573 in your hymnal. 573. And I'll repeat that this should be available on Breeze. If you go on it, you can print out your own order of service. Number 573, Christian Commitment. Taken from Romans 12, verses 1 through 18. Let us read responsively. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, Ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given unto me, that every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think so according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having been differing according to the grace that is given to us by the prophecy that is prophesied according to the portions of faith. Or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering. Or he that teacheth on teaching. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. Be the show of mercy 
Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which, e which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor and prefer one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice in his home, patient in tribulation, and continue in his prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind, one toward another. Mind not my things, but condescend. Be not wise in your own conceit. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Together, if, if it be possible, so much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Amen. Amen, church. Our prayer hymn today is number 125. Have thine own way, Lord. Please. Have thine own way. I don't know about you, but I recognize that in times like these, it's prayer time. And we need the Lord to have his own way. Amen. Have thine own way, Lord. says, have thine own way, Lord. Thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Have thine own way. This is our prayer today. Absolute. Feel with thy spirit. Feel with thy spirit. Till all shall see. Christ only, living in me. One more time, have thine own way. 
for it's praying time. to mold us and mend us after his will. And while we are here waiting, we'll be yielded and still. Oh God, have thine own way. Have thine own way. Have thine own way on the earth during this time. For Father, you know that even as we stand here in your presence, for your word declares where two or more are gathered in your name, there are you in the midst. Yes, Lord. Thank you. So even while we're yet here on one accord in your presence outside of these walls is a battle going on. Oh God, a battle that is affecting us. For though we are all in this pandemic, it has brought to light that there's a struggle, oh God, between the classes. It's brought to light that some of us are barely able to make it. Some of us are totally dependent, oh God, upon you. Which is a great thing because the dependency upon you, you have taught us that we need one another. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes. And so, oh God, we pray that you would have your way. Please. Have your way in our homes, oh God. Have your way in our school systems, oh God. Have your way through our government, oh God. Have your way through our people, oh God. Have your way through this season of an election, oh God. Have your way through the principalities that seem to be trying to tear us apart, oh Lord. We pray that you would have your own way. We depend totally upon you. And so we pray that you would keep us in the hollow of your hand together, oh God. That we might recognize that the person to the left and the person to the right of us are our brothers. In unity, we ask that you would have your way through us this day, this hour, in every second from this time we pray that your will might be done in Jesus' name yes, yes. Amen. amen and amen amen and Lord as we are standing with one accord ending through this prayer we ask that you would have us with one accord Continue in the same vein that you taught your disciples to pray. And they pray to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the, the power forever. Amen. Our morning hymn, number 23 in the hymnal, To God Be the Glory. Number 23. Sing out. 
now, church. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. The purchase of blood Every believer The promise of God The vilest offender Who truly believes That moment from Jesus A pardon receives Praise the Lord, praise the Lord Let the earth his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done, great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be the wonder our transport when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Father, through Jesus the Son, and in the glory, great things we have done. One more time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise him. I love you, church. Amen. This is where I found my Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> and you all are keeping me just so thank you. Thank you. I ask your forgiveness for any mistakes I've made. I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to be trying to do better. Our scripture for this morning is a long one. John 17. John chapter 17. And according to the bulletin that I have, I'm to read the entire chapter. I'm happy to do it. Especially since so much of it includes the words of Jesus. Yes, chapter 17, St. John. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, 
and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to the Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldst take them out of the world, but that thou shouldst keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O the world hath not known thee, excuse me, hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it that the 
love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. Amen. May the Lord have his words and our hearing them. Hello again, Second Baptist. Amen. We're again happy to be here in the house of prayer. We thank God for his blessing us. And uh, we want to thank all of our members for their continued support, all of those who are here and those who are worshiping virtu virtually. Uh, yesterday we had our, uh, we had the first quarterly meeting, and we had the first quarterly meeting in six months. And uh, we thank, we're thankful for all those who participated live and virtually. And we're, we're, I'm ha happy to announce that the church is still going on. Amen. 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 We have some solid, solid, committed people who are committed to the Lord Jesus Christ and his church. And the work of God is still going on uh, here, even though we haven't, uh, we haven't been in church for about five and a half months. Since we've come back together, we thank you for your coming back. And we want to uh, certainly uh, greet those who are uh, worshiping with us online. And when you're able to do so, uh, you can feel free to come back. Everything possible has been done to make us safe, uh, to have a safe environment. And uh, we just, we're happy on holy ground. And we certainly will we'll look forward to others coming back to be with us. I've been saying all along that God's going to take care of his church. The church is 2,000 years old. And this church, this church fellowship is 184 years old, approaching 185. And so we're going to continue to trust God that he will be with us and take care of us. And we know that he will. Amen. Amen. And thank you for your continued support for the Church of Jesus Christ. Um, I want to um, let us continue to pray for our sick and our shut-in. And let us pray for one another. And that we want to thank you for your continued financial support for the church. You know that when you come in, there's a repository for you to give your offerings before you enter the, uh, at the back of the sanctuary. And uh, let's continue to. Uh, and and uh, those who are worshiping virtually, remember the church has ongoing expenses and continue to support the church. Okay. Uh, my experience has always been, ever since I was young, that that if, if you take care of God's house, God's going to take care of you. Amen. He'll multiply your resources. Uh, and he will give back to you more than what you give to him. You can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. Let's pray now a word of thanks. A prayer of thanks for the gifts in the past and those for today. Heavenly Father, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Thank you for all that you do for us, oh God spiritually and physically and materially. And thank you, God, for the resources that we've been able to commit to your church in the time past. And now for this Sunday, our, we pray a special blessing upon the gifts that are to be given this Sunday, that have been given this Sunday. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that no one will be in need in any way for what they have given to you. But as you have said in your word, you, you'll give back to us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall you put into our laps. So bless the gifts and the giver and continue your work here, O oh God, O oh God, through the Second Baptist Church. For we ask it with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord.
I know most of the words, but I don't I want to make sure I see them. Our hymn of preparation, number 287 in your hymnal, Christ is all. Number 287. We can worship in song by singing his praises. I don't possess houses or land, fine clothes or jewelry, sorrows and cares in this old world my lot seems to be. But I have a Christ, a faith of Nothing could be Christ is all All and all This world to be There are some folk Who look and long For this world's riches There are some folk Who look for power Position to but I have a Christ all in my life. This makes me happy. For Christ is all, all and all this world to me. Yes, Christ is all. Christ is all means more to me than this world's riches. He is my light, my guiding light through pathless seas. Yes, it's mighty nice to own a Christ who my friend be. Yes, Christ is all. is all, is everything to me, Christ is all, without him nothing could be, Christ is all, nothing could be, Christ is all. Yes, he is. Yes. Our sermon scripture comes from the book of Acts, 
chapter 15, verses 36 through 41. Acts 15, 36 through 41. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria, Confirming the churches. Amen. Amen, church. As we begin the meditation period before the message, I want to just say a word of gratitude for uh, Reverend Des Pennington uh, for just being here and being one of our associate members, ministers, and, and for being a great support and help to me. And say amen, amen. Now, he is not salaried like I am, you know. I get a big, huge, monstrous salary from Second Baptist. But he doesn't get anything from Second. He gets a few dollars from the automotive company. But we appreciate him and, and, uh, and Dr. Beeman. Ever since I was a young pastor, I've always had the benefit of having associate ministers. And I've had the privilege of licensing several ministers and ordaining some. And I appreciate the camaraderie that I have with them, both male and female, and also the support that they give us. And uh, I appreciate what he does. And we want to just uh, greet, him, greet him today with a prayer and ex great expectation as he comes to preach the word of God. Say amen. amen. amen.
there is a sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. From our scripture sermon reading, verses 39 through 41. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed from another. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. Church, let us all hear when Paul and Barnabas had a contention, they simply agreed to disagree. Mm -hmm. Righteous and eternal Father, we thank you just for another opportunity to stand before these, your people. We count it an honor for you to have chosen a wretch like me someone from meager, humble, and dare I say the lowest beginnings that you have entrusted with understanding of the gift of your word. We are humble for what you have done. And it is for this reason that I decrease that you might increase in me. For I recognize there's nothing that I can do, nothing that I can say other than it is something that you have shown me through your And so, Lord, with that, I ask that you would once again open the ears of those that are intended so they may hear the eyes that they may see, and the heart that they might receive, so that later on their mouths would be open, that they may continue to proclaim what thus saith the Lord. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. And amen. This last or past Thursday, An employee of mine walked into my office and it was around two o'clock and when he got there he said to me he said uh, uh, have you heard the news hmm. what news and then he began This news that happened in Michigan, because as most of you know, my office is in Ohio, and so he was from the state of Ohio. Church, I need to let you know that my jaw almost hit the floor <laughs> As he began to explain to me that, announced that the FBI had just arrested six people for a plot to storm, help me Lord, the state capitol, to take hostages and ultimately kidnap the governor of Michigan. Lord, my Lord. take her to Wisconsin mm -hmm. and put her on trial mainly because they were unhappy about Governor Whitmer's coronavirus restriction. Uh -huh. And on my commute from Ohio to Michigan, by the end of the day, <laughs> it was determined that 
13 people had been arrested with more to come. You see, I, I, they've been planning this thing, plotting this thing since sometime in June. Where's my pause button? Somebody give me a whistle that I could call a technical file. Uh, I need a flag if, to, to, uh, to throw a penalty. Uh -huh. I, 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 I don't understand this. It's, 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 it's really got me bothered uh, um, um, that you mean to tell me that since June, there have been people meeting in over three states, meeting after meeting, and plotting this plan. Uh -huh. But do you mean to tell me that out of all these meetings, not one of those people, not one of them said, hey guys, raise their hand, hey, 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 hey guys, uh -huh. Uh -huh. this don't sound right. Yes. Okay. Not one of them had, had something in them that, 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 that said this is not a good idea. And, 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 and as I was driving, I, I bailed out America. Are we great again yet? This is not. Now, I, I, I must confess that the natural man in me had to take a minute, because it's, it's taken me a couple of days to kind of get this thing out. Mm -hmm. I had to shake this one off. Uh, uh, I, I had to take a pause, if you will. For these things are coming to us fast. So Lord, come quickly. I, I, I mean, the sanctified person in me, like, Lord Jesus, will you please come? This, this stuff is happening day after day. I'm, I'm, I don't know how you made it through all of those lines, but Jesus, I need you to come and fix it. Uh, it, it. It tore me up for quite some time, and this stuff has been happening over and over and over again. I need some help here. I must confess Come quickly, Lord Jesus, for we need you now. And church, of all the scriptures mm -hmm. that is found in our holy writ, of all the scriptures, I was comforted with Ephesians chapter 6 and number 12. Where it says, for we wrestle not against uh -huh. flesh and blood, but against principalities, right. against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in high places. Through uh -huh. those words, church, I hear telling us that it's time for us to get back to the basics. It's the body of Christ. To get a basic understanding of the tool used to create the atmosphere that we find ourselves in today, I think it's important to discuss social engineering. Mm -hmm. Social engineering. And more importantly, the power of agreement. Mm -hmm. In our opening reading today, I purposely had the reader to read the entire book of John chapter 17, or the entire chapter number 17 of John, not to lull you to sleep, but because while I know some believers cringe when I say this, what we recite as such is a simple model that Jesus gave to his disciples. Mm -hmm. How to pray when we say the, our Father, mm -hmm. yeah. which art in heaven. But I would submit to you that John chapter 17 truly is the Lord's prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, in this prayer, it can be broken down into three different prayers or three different subjects 
for the totality of that prayer. Mm -hmm. For the first five verses, Jesus prayed to be glorified mm -hmm. yes. so he could give life to we who believe. Well, I don't have a whole lot of time to dwell upon this part today. I need you to know something. Both science as well as the Bible agree that certain organisms do uh, uh, possess eternal life. And so you are going to live uh, forever. Amen. And in parentheses, uh, but you need to know where you're going to live. And not only that fact of eternal life being uh, science and the Bible both saying they're in agreement with this, any scientist uh, will both define the principle and the, well, well, both of them define the principle and the condition of which all life continues in that thing called eternity. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm really trying to, to, to continue and move on, but I want to give you a few scientific examples. Mm -hmm. Any scientist will tell you amoeba, which is a gluttonous piece of uh, matter, can only communicate with the smallest era of environment. See, certain things only are able to communicate with certain things. And he would also say that an insect, by virtue of its more complicated nature, corresponds with the wider area of environment. Scientists and the Bible also agree that there is this thing called man who is more varied in its makeup and is capable of correspondence with all parts of creation. And not only that, man is even capable of knowing a creator and being in perfect and eternal union with him. Mm -hmm. And because Jesus knew this, Jesus knew that we would live forever somewhere. Jesus knew this. He prayed in his prayer to, number one, give me my glory so that those that are mine can forever live with me. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There's only one way to God. And so then he went on from verses 6 through 19 to give the second portion of his prayers. And that was for his disciples, that they would be one-minded as he began to sign the power of attorney, of attorney so that they may be kept while proclaiming the testimony of God to a world that didn't want to hear what they had to say. Jesus knew this. Don't take them out of the world, he said in that portion of the prayer. But instead, I need you to keep them there. And in keeping them there, I want you to keep them from the evil. Don't move them because they have a job to do. It is their job to proclaim the gospel, to spread the good news, to let them people, let the world know that there's a dying savior who has away back to the Father yeah. so that once we live in our etern eternity we will forever be there with him. Amen. And so he said Lord keep them there they got a job to do. Jesus prayed that the Father would sanctify them while they're there through his truth. Why? Because he was sending them on a mission again into a world knowing that they that if they took their eyes off of the end goal and began to look around at the things that were happening in the world, they just might fall. They just might quit. They just might get so inundated about the stuff that's happening outside of Christ that they lose their focus on their journey. Mm -hmm. He knew they'd be in trouble. And finally, from verse 20 through 26, Jesus prayed for such a time as this. Yeah. Because in the end of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus prayed for 
the church. Yes. That we would receive the same spirit of unity as he and the Father shared, mm -hmm. that we too would be glorified with him. Mm -hmm. It is no coincidence to me that all three of these sections of the prayer, all three of them, have a singular, if you will, theme of unity. Unity. Now, I put this one in for free because, as, as he said, I don't get paid for this. <laughs> Jesus recognized that there is truly a power when we come together. There is truly a power when we are on one accord. Jesus recognized that there is a true power when we are truly walking in agreement. How did it Because he was there. He was there in the book of Genesis, I believe, That's chapter 12. That's right. During the conversation, he was there. Mm -hmm. During the conversation when the people were down there deciding that they were going to build up this tower that would reach the heavens. He was there for the conversation. And the conclusion to the conversation, uh, God declared, let us go. Get down there and confound their language mm -hmm. because it's long and they set their selves together to purpose to do anything they will accomplish it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so we got to get down there and confound the language. See, unless there is bad communication or lack thereof or an opposing force working together to stop a certain thing, people with one mind on one accord can accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. And so it is our assignment to be the salt of the earth by proclaiming that though we all may die in this world, we will live forever somewhere. Uh -huh. And that there is a man named Jesus, Jesus who is the only way, he is the only truth, and he is the only life. Because it is he who is the gatekeeper to eternal life with the Father. Our job to compel men to open their hearts and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Yeah and to live a life of sanctification after doing that, that we may be please, a pleasing sight in the eyes of God and ultimately hear those sweet words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You see, the principles of God have never changed, for it has always been his engineer a society by compelling men to be like-minded through the power of his word. Now watch this. What is social engineering? Social engineering is the concept of societal change being controlled by one centralized mindset. Or to put it plainly, it's the clever manipulation of the natural human tendency to trust in order to attain a certain goal. I'm, I'm, follow me. Now, 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 let's face it. While we know that it was God who, in his perfect will, has designed men to compel others to change their mind and follow after them, why, or follow after him while we know that it was God's design all along from Genesis all the way through in speaking his word he always spoke through mankind that he would compel others to get on his side while we know that it was his perfect will in doing that what man has done with this perfect conflict 
is frustrated its, des its original design purpose through the years in an attempt to control. And since we're not all alike and some view the cup half empty and others view the cup half full and others swear that this cup half full is a lot better than the cup half empty and because we can't sing together for some reason the, the half full people and the half empty people just decide that we're not going to talk to each other we're, we're, we're going to fight and bicker continually amongst each other yet we have example after example that even when we do not agree uh, I remember last Sunday we read something that if we don't unanimously agree yeah. we will Recognize. recognize the right of the majority. This is what we confess every first Sunday, but for some reason, man has done issues. Man has destroyed, if you will, the perfect will of God in social engineering to gain control over others to follow after them. Mm -hmm. They've mastered this art of taking our human nature and turning it against us. All you gotta do is on social media. Mm. The left and the right. Mm. Both of them get on my nerves, but the left, the, the right are so left-hating left and the left are so right-hating and nobody has recognized that it's okay to agree, to disagree. And so today, finding our place in America is a daunting task. Yeah, I'm going to throw that in there. Yet the gift of America is that you can be both poorer than poor and live an amazing life as you mature. Because after all, by its very concept, this is the land of opportunity. Yet the problems still arise if while you are focused on your own journey, you can carelessly and uh, uh, you, you can carelessly care about the societal changes. You pick up on the few concepts that impact your personal life, but it's impossible for you to be focused on a centralized, singular place of one nation, under God, indivisible, with unity and justice for all. So what am I saying? Because of Jesus Christ, it's American to have Black Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter all at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're right. Because of Jesus, it's American to be Antifa and Big Bank all at the same time. And I dare say it's American to be pro-life and pro-choice all at the same time. I, I, I don't understand why we frustrated this thing so far. Now, 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 you can see the truth that nobody seems to want to share is this one thing. The truth is that this country was built on borrowed land. Right. And there is no political party to stop the nation uh, and dictate that we become human or have that human emotion. There's no political party that has the right uh, 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 of humans. They, they, it's no political party that, that, that has the governance, that has the ability to teach us how to be social. Amen. But God's word, because of Jesus, does this. In fact, we are basically asked here in America to have blind loyalty to a nation that none of us originated. And that is the best example, if you want to ask me, 
of social engineering, if I ever heard one. So in closing, in the next month and a half, I will submit to you that this thing is going to be nasty. Okay, now, it's been nasty for quite some time. For some of, for some of us that are younger, it's, that look, it's been nasty for 16 years. For other of us that's a little bit older, it's been nasty for 52 years. I, I, I can see somebody waving in the back that it's been nasty for 78 years. It's, it's been nasty for quite some time. It's going to be nasty. What I asked you to do as you contemplate your decision over these next few days, however, is to look before you start to bash those on the other side of you. Uh -huh. Look in the mirror. And just like we learned that from the beginning or, or, or the, the sermon scripture, let's just agree to disagree and move on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because in that sermon scripture, there are three things that I want us to take away. Number one, there is great maturity in agreeing to disagree and proceeding with a relationship based upon integrity. Second thing that I need for us to see, especially concerning the, the, the volatility, if you will, of today's world, we have become too comfortable in hating things we don't understand or care for, all up under the guise of, this is America. It's my right. What I want us to see and want us to do and practice is stop the hate and simply agree to disagree. And the third thing that I want us to take away is just remember, when you are embracing your rights, no matter what side the fight you may be on, someone who disagrees with you has the same rights mm -hmm. that you do. Mm -hmm. Even though they are on the other side of the aisle. Today's lesson is social engineering. There is power when we agree. Even when the agreement is we disagree. You go your way and let me go mine. It is possible for two to coexist at the same time, especially when it comes to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Do handy things? Can the feet do the same things that the ear can do? God has given severally different gifts in the church. And I dare say the church is, is, is an example of how we should live in the world. I cannot despise you for your work and your belief. I cannot despise you say the cup is half empty. Neither do or should I expect to be despised because I believe that the cup is half full. Social engineering, there is power in agreement. God bless you. Amen. May he Amen. continue to keep you Amen. and watch over you as I pray that you hear the words that God shared with me and put integrity in your life. Mm -hmm. And now I wonder, We end these words as we begin to prepare to walk from this place to hang up 
on Facebook for those that are listening on the call. I wonder if there are any sound of my voice who have finally heard the voice of Jesus calling, asking, pleading that you might come to him for our invitational hymn we will be singing lift him up number 411 in our hymnals and it's still time for you to come to the Lord and give your life lift him up Every word for to answer to speak. And if I may be lifted up from the earth, will draw. Is he drawing to you? The doors of the church are open. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for the words that were shared. Amen. To me first and then thank you, God. Thank you, God. to those that are in attendance. We thank you today just for those that in hearing your word yes. have decided that they might finally make that decision to come to you. We thank you today that you have given us ammunition necessary 
to continue the fight. Yes. To continue this fight, not relying upon our physical abilities, but in relying upon those that are spiritual. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And so as we continue to go out and proclaim the word of the Lord in a world that may not want to hear it, as we continue to open our mouths and allow your spirit to pierce hearts, we ask that you would continue to keep us in doing so, that we might be motivated to continue this work. For it is a precious work that's shown yes. even the more today. We thank you for entrusting us with that power of authority to do your will. Thank you, Lord. It is an honor. Indeed, it is a privilege. And now, O oh Lord, as we begin to go from this place, but never from your presence, keep us in the hollow of, his, of your hand. In Jesus' name. Amen. of the ushers as you exit the place.